Reading manga is a massive time commitment, and I don't just mean sitting down and reading a volume for half an hour. Looking at the lengths of some manga series, it could take days, months, years to complete a manga series. So sometimes you just want something short and sweet. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Promji. Welcome back to a brand new video. Now, like I just said, today's video, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favorite short manga series. So of course we all have our different definitions of what a short manga series is. But for the sake of this video, I'm sticking to manga series that are six volumes or less. Mind you, that is not six omnibuses or less, that is six single volumes or less, just so there's no confusion. I'm also choosing to omit manga series that are one volume exactly, just because that could be a whole other video of my favorite one shots. And the final thing I want to say before I get into my top 10 list is of course, this is strictly my opinion. There are manga series that I've never read that are probably your favorite. So instead of being rude, make sure to go in the comments below, leave your top five, top 10 favorite short manga series. And we can continue this discussion of our favorite series. Granted, it's done respectfully. With all that being said, if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more manga videos just like this. So without any further ado, I say we get right into the top 10 short manga series list. So coming in at the number 10 spot, we have an absolute classic, and one that I'm sure many of you guys have experienced through the anime adaptation, that is Gona Guy's Devilman. Devilman is basically a manga series about these devils and demons who come back and try to take over the earth, and one high school student becomes Devilman using the demon's power to fight back. Now I know that that is a very brief plot synopsis, and for all these series going forward, I'm going to give a little blurb at the beginning to tell you what it's about, but Devilman is such a rich series. Obviously, just from that little plot synopsis, the plot sounds pretty basic, but where the series really thrives, it's in his characters and artwork. Our two main characters, Fudo and Ryo, have this great dynamic between kind of like good and evil. I kind of liken it to the relationship between Johan and Dr. Tenma in Naoki Urasawa's Monster. And then of course we have the beautiful artwork, which is so, so clean. And I know a lot of people get scared off when it comes to approaching an older manga series just because it looks so much different than what we have now. But Go Guy's art style is so unique and stylish with these very bold lines and outlines of the characters. But aside from being sleek and stylish, he can also get very gritty and visceral with his artwork, especially when he's drawing these demon designs and these dystopian hellscapes as the demons are taking over the earth. If you want a fantastic, dark, short, and extremely influential manga series to read, I would look no further than Go Into Guy's Devilman. Coming in at the number 9 spot is a series that I listed in my top 20 favorite sci-fi manga of all time. That is going to be Astra Lost in Space. Coming in at 5 volumes, this is a super fun space adventure. The manga is about this group of students who goes up into space for a kind of field trip, but when they get out onto this planet, this weird black hole thing sucks them up into space, and then as you could probably guess, they get lost. So it's up to this group of students to work together as a team, going from planet to planet to planet and surviving so they can finally get back home. Now this manga has a lot of strengths going for the first one being the cast of characters. They all have very diverse personalities and things about them that make them special, you know, special skills. And of course, being teenage students and having basically their lives on the line, they're not always going to get along. They face very interesting conflicts, especially at the halfway point, a huge bombshell is dropped that shakes everything up. I also absolutely love the artwork. It's more in line with typical shonen artwork that we see nowadays. But when you go on these different planets with unique plants and animals and just scenery, it is really cool to see. It's only five volumes in length. It's in print. You can even probably find it cheaper for around $35 for the entire set. I would highly recommend checking out Astro in Space if you're looking for a shonen series that is super slept on, but so, so fun. Now moving on to the number 8 spot, we have a manga series that is not quite as fun as Astro Lost in Space, but it is super impactful and one that I really, really resonate with. That is Inuasano's Solonin. Now at the stage I'm in in my life right now, I am a recent graduate who doesn't have a job or a professional career locked down right now, so a lot of stuff is up in the air for me. And when I can find a manga series that captures a lot of these emotions and situations perfectly, I'll really gravitate towards it, and that's exactly what Solonin is. The manga follows this adult woman who doesn't really have a whole lot going for her in her life, doesn't have a steady job, and really doesn't know what she wants to do with the rest of her life. However, the one thing that is constant in her life is her close-knit group of friends and music. And that is my favorite thing about this manga, is how it depicts the joy 
of making music. It is done spectacularly. And I think that there is a movie adaptation to this, which I have not watched, but I've heard it's great. But even just as I was reading this manga, just looking at the artwork, looking at these characters make music, play in their band, it just comes through so fluently that really resonates with me as someone who makes music and loves the medium. And there are some more emotional and sad moments, as you could probably expect from an Inyo Asano manga, so go in knowing that, but besides all that, this manga is just a joy to read. I really have to go revisit again because it is super meaningful to me personally. I know a lot of other people feel the exact same way. So at the number seven spot, I'm sure all of you guys knew this one was coming eventually. That is a classic of science fiction that has defined the genre and the manga medium at large. That is, of course, Automo's Akira. And I won't spend too long on this one just because we all know Akira. It's a cultural phenomenon. It is one of the greatest sci-fi manga of all time unlike the movie. But when it comes to sci-fi, this manga has it all. First and foremost, it has a fantastic dystopian post-apocalyptic atmosphere and the artwork in these buildings, it just the landscapes are beautiful. Obviously, we have some of the most iconic manga characters of all time, that being Kaneda and Tetsuo, Tetsuo being one of my favorite characters of all time. But the big reason I will always recommend the Akira manga over the movie is that it gives you the entire story. I mean, a big drawback of the Akira movie and one reason I don't really think the plot is executed that well is because it basically only gives you half and just cuts off. Whereas in the manga, the world is so much more fleshed out. I mean, they go to this city where these gangs rule the streets. It is just so, so cool. I cannot think of a more cool sci-fi environment, to be honest. So whether you've already seen the Akira movie or not, I would highly recommend if you've not read Akira, you need to read it. It is one of the classics for a great reason. One of the best sci-fi manga of all time. So sticking with sci-fi, coming in at the number six spot, we have a sci-fi manga from one of my favorite manga of all time. That is, of course, Makoto Yukimura's Planetess. Now, on the surface level, Planetess is a manga series about this group of workers on this junker ship out in space as they go around collecting trash and debris they find floating out in space. But what I love so much about Planetess is the characters and the very difficult themes that the manga tackles. Now, when it comes to characters, the best compliment I can give is that your characters feel like real human beings, like they have real emotions that you as the reader can personally relate to, and Planetess has those in spades. I mean, just looking at our main cast of characters, you have one who suffers from mental health issues, you have another who is a single mother, as well as a man who lost his wife in a tragic accident and is dealing with that loss. And throughout the five volumes of this series, you get to see a lot of other more short stories that are related to the main characters, where you have these other characters who experience things like racism and abuse. And don't get me wrong, it's not all so grim and depressing. You also have themes like love and friendship that are very uplifting and just joyous to read about. But it's a good balance of things that a lot of manga are really afraid to tackle and just things that make you feel good. And again, this is another manga series that is super accessible. You can find it in print in the two Dark Horse omnibuses. That's what I have, or you can find them in the out of print singles, which I think are personally pretty butt ugly. But regardless of how you choose to read this series, it is an easy recommendation for me. At one point, it's my top 10 manga of all time, and it has stuck around in one of my favorite manga series in my entire collection. All right, so we are officially halfway through the top 10 list. Hopefully this video hasn't gone on too long. I'll admit that would be pretty ironic for a video about short series. But at the number five spot, we have a manga series that I actually read pretty recently, a few months ago, and landed itself in my top five manga reads of 2023. And that manga series is none other than Gone. Now, I'm kind of breaking my rule about, you know, no omnibuses. I think this series is technically like seven extremely skinny volumes, but this series is just too good. So I'm saying screw the rules. It's my video anyway. What are you going to do about it? But yeah, Gone is a manga series that is probably among the most unique on this list for the simple fact that there is no dialogue in this entire manga. The manga is basically a collection of short stories as we're watching this little dinosaur gone as he's the last living dinosaur basically just go about his business doing all sorts of different shenanigans, whether it be in the desert, in the forest, climbing a snowy mountain, he is everywhere. Just befriending all these different types of animals, forming bonds that go beyond species, and teaching us as the reader a plethora of valuable life lessons. There are stories in this manga that'll make you laugh, others that will make you cry, like seriously, some of these are very, very sad. And though this manga has no words, you will not want to breeze right through it because the artwork is some of the best manga 
artwork I have ever seen. It is so detailed, these varieties of animals and different landscapes. Probably my top five best drawn manga of all time. It is spectacular. You'll want to take it all in and just take your time experiencing these wonderful stories that are present in Gone. Also, if you haven't seen my full in-depth review of the Gone manga, definitely check it out by clicking this card up here in the corner. Now, coming in at the number four spot is the only manga on this list that I actually don't own physically, and that's because nobody owns it physically. To my knowledge, this manga has never gotten a physical release, and when I tell you what it is, you'll understand why. But the manga in question is Onani Master Kurosawa, or Masturbation Master Kurosawa. Now, I'll be the first to admit the plot synopsis of this manga is pretty weird. It's about this middle schooler who has a very devious pastime that he partakes in in the bathroom stalls, you could probably guess. He's basically an incel, he doesn't have any friends, and he despises the girls, especially the popular girls, so he thinks about them when he's doing his special little hobby. But eventually he gets caught in the act by a lesser popular girl, in fact, kind of a social outcast, and she blackmails him into taking his hobby a whole lot further and kind of terrorizing the girls in their class. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, Pramji, why is this weird-ass manga, this freaky-ass manga, so high up on your list? And that is because, beyond just the kind of silly and ridiculous plot, there is some really good lessons in the series. The obvious being one of personal growth. Now, Kurosawa is not a good kid. He doesn't like other people. Deep down, he probably doesn't even like himself. But as the series goes on, he learns lessons and builds relationships that ultimately make him a better person. There's also a relationship aspect regarding one of the relationships Kurosawa has. I won't get into spoilers, but me personally, as I was reading this manga, I was kind of going through something in a relationship, and reading this series really helped me put things into perspective and again, grow as a person. And as I'm putting up panels of this series, you're probably thinking, man, this artwork sucks. And while it's definitely not as polished, as you know, a professional manga series that gets published and put out serialized. I think the art style of this manga has a lot of charm and kind of adds a personal aspect that helps you relate to the series more, so just want to put that out there. But while you probably won't relate with the plot synopsis of this manga, at least I'd hope not, I'm sure a lot of you guys can deeply relate to this manga as far as its themes and messages go, and that is exactly why Masturbation Master Kurosawa earns the number 4 spot on my top 10 short manga series list. All right, so we're finally cracking in to the top three manga on this list. And at the number three spot, we have one of my all-time favorites. That is Ping Pong by Tayo Matsumoto. Now, in the eyes of the grand population at large, Ping Pong may seem like kind of a lame sport and one that wouldn't be very exciting. But Tayo Matsumoto takes this sport, which I personally play and really enjoy, and makes it so exciting and fun to watch. It's no secret that as far as more mainstream manga authors go, Taya Matsumoto has one of the most distinct art styles out there, and it comes in full force in ping pong, just the way that the actual matches are drawn, as well as just character designs and the environment and setting that the characters reside in. I mean, as far as plot goes, it basically follows these two kids who are really good at ping pong and face all sorts of different kind of competition. But beneath the surface, there are some really good themes about competitive spirit and personal growth that are really emotionally moving and have you really invested when you're reading this series about ping pong. Tai Matsumoto is just such a gifted manga and actually have a Another manga series from him on this list, believe it or not, but yeah, Ping Pong, amazing series. If you haven't seen the anime, I've heard that's really good as well, but I would highly recommend the manga. There is nothing quite like it. Now moving on to the number two spot, we're getting into my manga series that I have as 10 out of 10 masterpieces. And this number two manga is by my number one favorite manga of all time, Osamu Tezuka. The series in question is Message to Adolf. To put it simply, Message to Adolf follows three different characters named Adolf in World War II. You have the son of a Nazi official named Adolf, you have of course Adolf Hitler, and also a Jew named Adolf who lives in Japan. And as this manga goes on, you see these characters' lives intertwine for better or for worse, uh, usually for the worse. As this manga takes place in one of the darkest eras of human history, of course, that being during the Holocaust in World War II. So with that being said, this is not a cheerful manga. Some of Osama Tezuka's manga can be very playful and cheerful. This one is not. However, the difficult topics of the era are handled in a very interesting way. I mean, you see these gruesome things going on on page, people being executed, you know, this mass genocide, but Tezuka draws these things in a way I think is very accessible to audiences at large. You still understand the severity and the grim nature of the things that are happening in this series, 
but it's drawn in a way that is not overly gruesome, overly graphic, but still gets the point across. This series is a 10 out of 10 masterpiece manga for me, not only because of the way the story and the dark elements are handled, but just because it is so engaging. A lot of Tezuka series are a little bit more slow burns. This one, I could not put down. But yeah, enough cannot be said about Osama Tezuka's influence and quality of his series. And in my personal opinion, Message to Adolf is his best series that he has to offer. So definitely check it out if you have not already. Ladies and gentlemen, we have finally reached the number one spot on this top 10 list. My favorite manga series that is six volumes or below. And this is actually coming from a mangaka we previously mentioned on this list, that being Taiyo Matsumoto. The manga at the number one spot is none other than number five. Now, just to put it simply, number five is a bizarre manga series. And I'll give you a little plot synopsis. Try to stay with me. Basically, some unknown event caused catastrophic damage to the earth. So this guy in a bunny costume named Papa genetically engineers a group of bio soldiers who make up the Rainbow Defense Force, which is basically a propaganda tool for the government. And each one of the members has these weird psychic powers where they can feel each other's emotions. Some members even have powers beyond that, but for the sake of this video, I'll just keep it simple. One day, one of the members of the Rainbow Defense Force named Number Five goes rogue. He kills another one of the members and flees with this strange girl. So the government sends the other members of the Rainbow Defense Force to go kill Number Five. Now there are certain manga series on this list that I can say, you know, everybody should go out and read. Akira is one of those. I think Gone is one that anybody can enjoy. Number five is a little bit out there, therefore I think some people may not quite vibe with it. But if you're looking for a manga series that is super surreal and out there, yet has a very gripping plot and amazing artwork, look no further than number five. This is one of my favorite series of all time, period. Just starting off with that surreal aspect, like I said, this is a Taiyo Matsumoto manga, and one of his best qualities is creating these environments and worlds that are very out there and feel like dreams. And you I mean, you have these weird looking characters with mind powers, but you also have these hybrids of animals that are basically in every page. I mean, it is just so out there and unique. I love it. But besides all of these surreal hippie bullshit, at the very base level, Level, the story is compelling. A guy kills one of his teammates, the teammates get sent after him. There is so much action, amazingly drawn. I mean, it's so fluid, it's visceral, it's violent, which is something that I really did not expect when I read this manga. But by far, the best thing about this manga is how it conveys emotion. Like I said, the Rainbow Defense Force members can all feel each other's emotions, and sometimes that feeling of emotion that they feel from one another is so intense that you as the reader can really relate and feel to it just because of how it's drawn and portrayed through the artwork. So I won't go too much further talking about this series because I could talk about it endlessly, but if you want to learn more about this manga before you fully commit to reading it, check out my manga review. It's one of my favorite manga reviews I've ever done, and hopefully through this video and through that video, I can fully display my love for this manga and convince you to give it a try. So guys, that's going to do it for this video, going through my top 10 short manga series under 6 volumes or less. I love all these manga series, and I would urge you, if they sound interesting to you, go out and read them for yourself. And of course, I want to keep this discussion going in the comments below. Leave your thoughts on my list. Do you agree? Do you disagree with any of my picks? Leave your top 5, top 10 short manga lists in the comments, and let's further discussion. Both of you got some good recommendations and enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more manga videos just like this. So yeah, this has been The Prom G. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And as always, hope to catch you in the next one.